Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing a review of We Need New Names by Novaila Bulawayo, who is a Zimbabwean-American author. This book is well known. It is such a great book. It was actually shortlisted for the 2013 Man Booker Award, and it is just really deservedly well known because it is so, so good. So I wanted to talk to you today about what it's about and why I loved it so much. So first, let me give a summary of what the story is about. We follow Darling, a 10-year-old girl who lives in sort of a shanty town in Zimbabwe and spends her days just making up games and playing with her friends. But we see around her the world sort of falling apart and so much going wrong and is very, very kind of problematic and difficult, but we see it through her eyes. Later in the story, she gets the opportunity to move to America to live with her aunt. And then we see her growing into teenagehood and the way that she views America as an immigrant and the way that she adapts and the way that she relates back to Zimbabwe as well. So now let me talk about the things that made me love this book, starting with the beautiful writing. I loved the writing in this book. I think that that is what really, really made it stand out so strongly, was just how gripping and immersive and vivid and beautiful the writing was. Um, it really drew me in and sometimes I had to just stop and sort of process the beauty of the sentences and the analogies that were made. It, it was so, so very, very vivid. Um, for example, I really liked this quote. Because we were not in our country, we could not use our own languages. And so when we spoke, our voices came out bruised. When we talked, our tongues thrashed madly in our mouths, staggering like drunken men. And if you have ever tried to speak a foreign language, you feel that, that way that you just can't wrap your tongue around sounds. And it just was such a vivid way of describing that feeling. And all of the book is like this. All of it is so beautifully written. I absolutely loved that aspect of it. A related part of this book that I thought was just so well done was the voice of the narrator. We are experiencing this story through the lens of Darling, who starts out the story as 10 years old, and her voice is so strong in this. We get everybody's um, actions and what they're saying through her eyes as well, so that rather than direct quotes, we get her hearing them say it, and the way that she interprets everything, it just feels so strongly of a 10 year old girl. Um, the way that she talks and describes the experiences as well just reminds me of talking to a 10 year old kid who does run on sentences and is excited and is confused and is constantly judging things. And it's just, it permeates the entire story. So I wanted to give you a little taste of this. The woman points at me, nods, and tells me to say cheese, and I say it mostly because she's smiling like she knows me really well, like she even knows my mother. I say it slowly at first, and then I say cheese and cheese, and I'm saying cheese, cheese, and everyone is saying cheese, 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 and we're all singing the word, and the camera is clicking and clicking and clicking. And it's just that feel that I can imagine a little girl telling me a story of getting her picture taken and it's sounding like this. And it's just so gripping and engrossing to feel this story from her perspective. It's very, very well done. Another part of the book that I think is related to that child's voice is the way that it's able to address really, really heavy topics in a way that doesn't feel overwhelming. Because this story is told through Darling's perspective, even though there's a lot of very bad things going on in the background, we get it from her perspective, not necessarily fully grasping how bad some of these things are, not really having the world knowledge um, to feel the depth of that kind of badness and pain. And so her naivete and her innocence protect us as the reader from a lot of that as well, allowing us to really see some very, very difficult content in a way that still makes it so engaging and so gripping and you're able to stay with the story the whole time. So some of the very many content warnings for this book, and this is not a complete list, are things like um, body image and eating disorders, depression, AIDS, rape, physical abuse, child sexual abuse, animal abuse, intense poverty, death, 
murder, and many other things. So this book really tackles so many very difficult topics, but it does it in a way through Darling's eyes that I think makes it um, very accessible for all of us. And I think that that is real skill to talk about difficult topics in a way that both doesn't minimize those topics while allows the reader to stay fully connected to them. Another aspect of the book that I thought was so well done was the commentary on culture and society. So in this book, we spend about half of the book in Zimbabwe and about half of it in America. And the way that Bulawayo comments on the culture of each of these places is really, really fascinating. In Zimbabwe, she talks so much about the sort of the way that the family dynamics work, the way that religion works, the way that political corruption works, and also sort of the um, way that people have a lot of negative views of others. So there's a lot of uh, discussion of sort of like the racism and fat phobia and judging of others that happens in the Zimbabwean culture that I thought was really interesting. And when she comes to America, there's also this um, kind of discussion of American culture and things like the way that children are raised and often uh, spoiled, the way that Americans treat food and weight, where there's all of this both under eating and overeating, there's extreme um, health obsession as well as extreme obesity, all of that kind of dynamics of Americans' relationship with food and weight. And there's also this exploration of the way that Americans treat parents and elders, the way that um, often there's this lack of respect for family and for those who are older and more experienced. A topic related to kind of the culture in Zimbabwe versus in America is that of the complexity of the immigrant experience. So Darling is somebody who, as a young teenager, has moved to the US, and that experience is a very interesting one for her because she has a lot of dualities in the way that she feels about things. On the one hand, she's very glad that she was able to come to the US and get out of kind of the very bad situation that her family was in in Zimbabwe, but at the same time, there's a lot of resentment towards the US. There's a lot of frustration that the US isn't kind of the, the you know, ideal dream place with streets paved of gold that everybody says it is. There's so much uh, problematic content in the US so much that is a problem for her and she misses Zimbabwe so deeply um, but at the same time she's not willing to leave the US and give all of that up and she's not willing to um, go back to Zimbabwe because that gives up so much of her dreams and in staying in the US she also is facing the uh, consequences of being separated from her home and no longer really fitting in at home, becoming Americanized in a lot of ways. And I think that this is very much the experience of so many immigrants, especially uh, what we would call Generation 1.5, who immigrate to another country when they are still fairly young, but they have enough of a connection to their home culture that that's still a big part of who they are. Uh, this is just a really good exploration of that complexity. And the last theme that I thought was just really impactful in this story was that of really the importance of your heritage and your roots. So as Darling is moving to the US and living with her aunt who moved to the US many decades ago, um, she's really finding the ways that um, this lack of connection to Zimbabwe, this lack of connection to her family, to her roots, to her culture, to her language is impacting her. And she's seeing it also in the other people around her who have immigrated to the US. And it's just this real um, discussion of the way that being separated from your heritage and culture can affect you and affects you on different time uh, levels. So in the short term, it might be something like missing home. And on the medium term, it might be becoming one of these people who sort of in between where you no longer feel at home in your actual home country but you also don't fit in in your new country and then in the long term the effect that uh, raising a family having your descendants live in this culture are going to have on you because you are separated from everybody at home 
but your children are growing up in a different culture and so they don't really uh, connect with you on that cultural way and so this kind of isolation that can happen I think is really really well discussed in this book. Overall, I highly recommend this novel. I think that it is just so well written. The language is beautiful and evocative. The way that we live in Darling's head and the way she views everything as a child and as somebody who immigrates at a young age, I just think that it's so well done. It's really fascinating and it just tackles a lot of very important and heavy topics in a way that is still often lighthearted and fun there's so much humor in this book so I highly recommend this if you guys have read this book if you have any thoughts any comments anything at all go ahead and leave me a comment down below I'd love to hear from you